Today I want to speak about math, for math lovers in particular, and how this intersects with success in the selective college admissions process in the United States. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. If you are aiming for a highly selective college or university and you like math, you fancy yourself as a strong math, math student, you, you really want to devote time inside and outside the classroom to math, uh, and you feel like you, you're strong at math or you could be strong at math, I have advice for you today. Many schools, sadly, middle schools in particular, put a glass ceiling on where a student thinks he or she can wrap up his or her math career in high school depending on the math class the student is in in eighth grade. Uh, so again, whereas you know, 15, 25 years ago, many of my students were starting high school having already completed Algebra 1 and starting high school with, in most cases, geometry or starting with Algebra 2. These days, uh, interestingly, um, many students are finished both Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 or both Algebra 1 and Geometry by the first day of high school, and therefore they start high school in either uh, Algebra 2, if they've already completed Algebra 1 and Geometry, or they start with Geometry if they've already completed Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, and then they're sooner going to be able to check off the box by 10th grade, Algebra 3, Trig, or, or Pre-Calc, so that by the 11th grade year, the student is already able to be in a uh, calculus class. Uh, so... What I'm here to tell you today is that if you love math, if you're going to frame your, your application to selective colleges and universities as you are a math lover, you are strong in math, uh, you want to build on this foundation in college in some math field or math adjacent field, uh, I don't think it's good enough of an excuse any longer to simply say, uh, well, you know, I've done math along the, the track that I've been given and I am only wrapping up, definitely, if you're only wrapping up pre-calc by the end of ninth grade, I don't think that's enough. If you're only wrapping up even calculus by the end of 12th grade, I also don't think that's enough. If you really are framing your application and your argument around the fact that you're a math lover and respecter and uh, appreciator and also you feel like you're strong in math, regardless of the high school curriculum you find yourself in or the course options available to you, or regardless of where you started math as a result of where you finished math in middle school and where you therefore start math in high, at high school, you got to stretch and strive further in order to best position yourself for a more actual advanced math learning. That's just for your own benefits because you claim you like math and you love math and you respect math and you're strong in math. Why not actually go further in math by the time you get to your 12th grade year? But also on a more strategic level, you also want to be able to say to the colleges as you're submitting applications to them in your 12th grade year that I have strived to be the best math student I can be, not just in math competitions or in the math honor society outside of the classroom, but I've also broken the mold that was set for me in eighth and or ninth grade by striving out of the tracking and actually getting out of the tracking that I was destined to be in and getting into a more advanced math track. And how do you demonstrate this? Well, you've got to fight like heck in many schools in order to do this. There are ways to do it, though. I want to give you some on-ramps to do so. So what am I talking about? Let's say you start high school and you've only had Algebra 1. You're starting high school with geometry. And therefore, you probably think in many cases you can only really wrap up with a course like uh, AP Calc AB. Because that's just the way it works at your school for people who start with geometry. That's the, the highest they usually achieve. If they're starting with geometry in ninth grade, they usually the highest they can achieve is AP Calc AB uh, in, in 12th grade. Well, what's stopping you from taking a summer course or a night course or an online course or something at a local community college or online high school or something 
that would allow you to start 10th grade basically a year ahead of you where you otherwise would be. I'm not trying to say do it in a, in a slap shot way where you're going to not actually get all the material. I'm, I mean actually get all the material and go further if, in fact, there are kids at your school who get to, let's say, Calc BC by 12th grade, but they would have needed to come in with both, let's say, Algebra 1 and Geometry under their belt. You came in only with Algebra 1 under your belt. What's stopping you from somehow getting ahead? Maybe your school district or your school even offers summer courses, but even if they don't, let that not be an excuse. There are other ways to cobble together a real year of math that would, in this case, geometry, that would get you to, let's say, Algebra 3, Trig, or Pre-Calc by 10th grade as opposed to waiting for that until tw- uh, 10, 11th grade. Obviously, you would want to check with ahead with your school to make sure that if they that they would accept the method that you're proposing or considering that I'm mentioning or another uh, another potential uh, source of math enrichment that would allow you to get to that level, maybe a, a placement test in the beginning of the school year or something by the beginning of 10th grade. But my point I'm trying to make here is don't settle for where your tracking would leave you. Because if you're going to argue to colleges that you love math and you've spent all this time with math outside the classroom and these honor societies or this math counts team or whatever it is at your school it's called, um, I think it would be a lovely compliment to that to actually go further in math. You don't want to sort of uh, jump the shark here. That's not really the right terminology. You don't want to put the apple before the cart, the cart before the horse. You don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? You don't want to uh, say you're you're so into math and then not show truly any initiative to get out of the horrible tracking you found yourself in if you really want to go further in math. Don't settle for waiting till college to start taking multiple math classes a year. Why not start doing it in high school? A, maybe your high school will let you, but I'm not referring here to taking stat at the same time, AP statistic at the same time, because that's not on the track that I'm referring to. I'm actually talking about ideally getting to a post AP Calc AB course. That would be a Calc BC, or it would be a multivariable calculus, or it would be a differential equations, or it would be a linear linear algebra. I don't know what they call it at your school. They call it different things at different places. But if your school offers a post BC Calc, that would be a place to strive to be. If you're framing your application around the argument that you love math, you're strong in math, you're on all these math enrichment opportunities outside of the classroom, but then you're somehow only finishing math in high school with AP Calc AB. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. See, I just did the math. You need to do the math. Colleges are doing the math. So try to investigate as a high school ninth grader or 10th grader in particular, because that's when you have more flexibility. You either Things have not solidified to the point yet where there's there's more on your plate. You have more time potentially to still get it, get, the, the tracking fixed, that is the time to investigate ways in which you could actually try. Again, a lot of kids used to do it over the summer to take a, a particular course, the next course in the sequence that would allow you to then basically jump a year ahead in math by the time you get back from summer break. Again, I think it's ideal to do that as an underclassman at the latest, maybe going to 11th grade, but you don't want to really wait to do that till the end if you can avoid it. There are some kids who can pull that off, but Because there's so much else on your plate as an upperclassman, taking SAT and ACT, involving yourself in more leadership activities at the extracurricular level, visiting colleges, you have so many other things going on, it's less likely you're going to be able to fill a full summer or even a part of a summer or your nights or weekends during breaks or during the school year online at a community college with a math class that's going to allow you to actually get to where you want to be by 12th grade if you start doing this and thinking like this in 11th or 12th grade. So try to do it in 9th grade or 10th grade, so that you can get at your school, if they offer multivariable, you'll bust through AP Calc AB and BC, and you will get to multivariable calculus, or differential equations, or linear algebra, or one of these other courses that some schools offer. Now, if your school does not offer any of those, let's say your school literally just stops at AP Calc AB, or, you know, the IB kids, of course, Math A and A, um, then you still don't have an excuse in my book to come to me and tell me, Craig Meister, that you couldn't have done more or you shouldn't. Why should you do more? If you love math, if that's how you really think, then you can still try. I mean, again, the IB program is sort of harder. To, it's a harder, it's a harder 
axe to grind here with IB because that's usually set in 11th and 12th grade. But if you are really interested in doing math enrichment beyond stat, again, I'm be beyond statistics, uh, there are ways by talking to your teacher in AB, IB, A, and A, math, HL, or obviously by talking to your deans or your, your advisors or your guidance counselors or your math teachers at a school that's an AP school or a non-AP school, whatever the curriculum you find yourself in, about getting and getting past and bursting out of the bubble of, of AP Calc or AB, AB or BC. And that would, and again, AB, uh, IB, HL, math, A and A. You wanna get past that if you can, by so that by 12th grade, you're in one of these post AP or post IB, A and A courses, if that's possible. Again, it's gonna be hardest to achieve with IB, math, HL, A and A. But with almost every other math curriculum you might find yourself in, this is very doable. And if your school doesn't offer a post AP math, then that's the point at which you would want to go to the community college, or that's the point at which you would go back to that well and see if you could take math at a local, another high school or a local community college, a summer course, online high school, online college. Take one of those very impressive post AP calc courses, like, like I said, multivariable calculus differential equations for a semester, for a year, linear algebra. There are, again, depending on the school, there are other names for these. Uh, but I'm not referring to doing this just to get to statistics or AP statistics. There's nothing wrong with statistics. Statistics teachers do not email me in hate mail at this point. What I'm basically saying is that's a lovely complement math course that you could easily take concurrently with a, uh, other math courses in your schedule. But what I'm saying is I want you to actually try to do beyond the calc, beyond the calc. That's really where you want to go is beyond calc. Uh, because wouldn't that be like the jewel in your crown by the time you're applying as a high school senior to say, I love math. Look at all these extracurriculars related to math on my resume, but all in my, that part of my application. But also, speaking of resume, I have a whole short course about how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume. You can click the link to that below this video. But uh, but they're going to really take you much more seriously if you're in multivariable calculus saying that as opposed to being, God forbid, in just pre-calc. But even just an AP Calc AB, that's not so special anymore. A lot of other kids are in that curriculum or that course by 12th grade. So while you might love math, what it also shows me is that you're not much of a leader if you're not willing or able to actually get to a harder math class or a higher or more advanced math class by your 12th grade year. And that's what you want to do when you're aiming for admission at a very highly selective college or university. There are a num number of uh, pathways to get to the destination you want to get to, depending, again, what else is on your plate and what your school has as course options or what your local community college has as course options, if they're dual enrollment options, some matriculation options, concurrent enrollment options, you name it, online options, depending on your budget, whether it's free, whether you're at a private school, a parochial school, a public school, obviously the path will be slightly different. But in all cases, I would make the same argument. Strive to achieve that. Because if you can achieve that, you're going to come across as a true math all-star. And you are going to start to appear to be head and shoulders up above your competition. And that's where you want to be when you're aiming for selective college admissions and saying you're trying to focus on math or some math-adjacent subject in college or university. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you also want to work with me and get my one-on-one -on -one guidance on how you can achieve just what I talked about today in, in your unique situation, definitely go to my website, collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.